Oh, and before I forget, let's unpause and look at our manpower and factory. So before we unpause, 124 mils and 106 sieves plus 400,000 manpower. Bam! 3.9 million manpower, Roma Invicta, 142 mils and 130 sieves. So all in all, not a bad deal. Ladies and gentlemen, you join me in a glorious moment. That's right. This is Avalanche 1.12, better known as by blood alone. And today Paradox has graciously given me early access to the DLC so I could bring you this video, which they're also paying for. God, I love Paradox. Anyway, what are we going to do today? We're going to start a new game game and who better to play as than Mussolini himself the titular nation of this DLC we will be playing Italy Iron Man mode on historical focus is on and we're gonna try and restore Rome here we are beautiful Italia and of course with this brand new nation comes a brand new focus tree look at this look at this thick boy oh we've got industry bonuses to the left we've got an army an air and a naval tree extensive huge and then the meat of this thing the political branch locked behind our progress in ethiopia we can go communist on the left which is where it belongs fascist in the center which i guess this is the historical path culto del duce and then you can also convene the grand council where you can either choose a different flavor of fascist with italo balbo or dino grandi or or do the most based thing and restore the monarchy monarchism playthrough anyone and over on the right we have the foreign affairs branch this is alliances war goals etc some nice things here as well but today we focus on Mare Nostrum that's right we are going for the Roman Empire the Novus Imperium Romanum and for that we'll need to do some conquest but first things first let's work on our focus tree now we are going to be dealing with Ethiopia first and and to do that, we might need some Ethiopian war logistics. Most of these are 35 days, so it's not a big deal that we have so many focuses, but we have to start somewhere. So Ethiopian war logistics. As for research, Italy starts with a ton of research slots Four. well, it's not a ton, but it's a lot. And we can get some basic research in. We'll start with the basics. It leaves us with a fourth slot. Now, Italy is very well suited to the naval game. And let's check out the naval tab. This is where you'll research your hulls now, your basic ship types, as well as certain specific ship add-ons like sonar and depth charges as well as armor belts for your bigger ships and the naval support tab is where you'll find the guns the ammunition the torpedoes damage control fire control transports this has been very very much slimmed down much cleaner much more intuitive i love the way they handle this you know what they else they changed airplanes no longer are you researching fighters bombers cast that sort of stuff no we now research the basic airframe and depending on what airframe we use we can build an airplane all to our own liking and i'll show you that in a second but first let's look around what do we need here we're pretty much caught up on tech at least starts with a competent level of air power so this is okay i could go for the large airframes but i don't think i need them so instead i'll use my fourth slot to work on some naval stuff the navy might need to do some work construction will start with the basics as usual just a couple of civilian factories and then convert into mills because we will work heavily with military factories speaking of let's get some production going i don't like these light tanks i know that they're a staple of the italian army they're tankettes i don't like using them so i'm not going to use them instead i'll just use trucks or something i'm also going to need artillery i'm also going to need trains because italy doesn't start with all that many trains and i'm gonna get some anti-air we are already making some close air support so i want to put more factories on that Cass is still king then we have a bunch of ships already in the queue now if you want to min max probably a good idea to delete at least the early heavy ships but i want my conte di cavour i want my giulio cesare i want my littorio i want my big boats so i'm gonna build all of these ships just gonna make sure i build the escort vessels first they're quick and then the extra dockyards will become available to produce my heavy ships so heavy ships last escorts first on to ethiopia we have 18 divisions in the north seven to the south this should be enough to deal with Ethiopia. Realistically, especially as a player, you don't really have to worry about this too much. I'm going to give you a little tip. 
They don't want you to commit too many troops to this. Why? Well, look at this. If Italy launches a major offensive, the war escalates. If Italy commits more than 25 regular divisions, the war escalates. And if Italy commits more than 300 aircraft, the war escalates. However, if we simply commit the entirety of the Italian army from day one, we will beat them well before the war escalates into anything remotely resembling a threat to us. And we can deal with this nonsense once and for all. Why do I want to do this? Very simple. If I can beat Ethiopia within 70 days, so before they get two focuses done, they will not be able to finish boarding the train. When this one happens, Haile Selassie leaves his country and sets up shop somewhere else. And the war will technically not end until we've dealt with all of the soon to be here resistance and we need to get compliance. It's a whole mini game. It's very well thought out. It's very historical. It's well done. However, I play video games and we optimize the fun out of them. So if you defeat the Ethiopians quickly enough, Haile Selassie can't do that. And when the war is over, the war is over and we don't have to worry about any of that. Bam, a full wing. Bam, a full wing. This is so, so easy. This is so good. This is the kind of quality of life changes that I want in my video games. This makes Air Force management so much better now. It's just infinitely better. Anyway, I'm going to commit about 400 airplanes here. Yes, it's going to escalate the war. We don't care. We intend to crush Haile Selassie before he gets to leave the country. All right, that is pretty much the basic setup done. We will now continue on our quest towards the Roman Empire by crushing Ethiopia. And let's make sure we do this right. I want to concentrate my forces here, use the cavalry to cut off this division, and we'll push in as hard as we can to the north. Just concentrate our forces on lone positions, push for victory points, and circle divisions, bypass divisions. Just keep the ball rolling with our air cover. This should be no problem. And let's unpause and crush Ethiopia. Green air going up already. That's good. And while we're crushing the Ethiopians, let's take a look at the state of Italy. So we've got a bunch of national spirits here. Most are familiar. We've got Victor Emmanuel. We've got Vittoria Mutilata. And we've got the naval treaties. What we also have is Ricostruzione Industriale. This simulates our efforts to build up our domestic industries after the Great Depression. And these are mostly positive. And we we can expand on these through focus tree. We also got a less than optimal military industry. Yeah, that's not good. So we're going to have to work through this and army, air and naval spirits. Not great. Again, the focus tree holds the solutions to many of these things and we'll get to them in a bit. Anyway, we've made our first push in Ethiopia. Let us continue. Just maximize the pressure on these guys. Never let them recover. Keep pushing, 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 pushing. And there's the first one. Success in North Ethiopia. We get a couple of bonuses and Ethiopia takes a hit to base or support. We need to conquer the south as well for a similar event. And to the south, additional troops Troops are rolling in and we should be able to start crushing them. Now supply might be an issue, so I'm going to motorize a couple of these supply hubs. The Italian industry needs a little bit of a boost and we're going to provide that. Where are we? There we go. Italian highways. Fun little event here. This is RNG, so you don't know when this pops up. It's usually early on, but it could be very early or it could be a month from now. Um, the Sultanate of Aousa. So these guys here, they're neutral right now, but they've been sort of under our thumb. Not our puppet, but we have our say in their affairs. Now we can get rid of them entirely. Send them an ultimatum, demand total subjugation or not. I don't know why you do this, but mm. so we will send them an ultimatum. As a result, we will eat them. And that is the fall of Addis Ababa. Like I said, if you just bring the entire Italian army, it doesn't matter. Like the mechanics cool and you can really make good use of it as Ethiopia. But if a human plays Italy, you can just blitz past it. And Ethiopia is defeated. And this is the new peace mechanic. Now we are the only contributing <laughs> nation here, so we can take whatever we want. Essentially, you select what you want and you bid on it. You submit your demands. And if there was somebody else who was also submitting demands, we'd now get a pop-up window. Might see that later in other peace deals. There's not much to show here. We got all of Ethiopia. We can now confirm and exit. I'm going to extricate my troops and send everybody north before I reorganize the military. These areas are going to have some pretty nasty resistance. So yeah, resistance is fairly high, compliance fairly low. But 
we did manage to get them defeated before the Ethiopians managed to send Haile Selassie out of the country. As a result, resistance can actually be managed relatively easily as long as we can get enough guns to our garrisons and compliance will go up relatively easily as long as we set the right laws, take the right focuses. We should be okay with Italian Africa. Ethiopia managed to get Haile Selassie out of the country. We're going to get negative events. We're going to have high resistance, low compliance. It's just a nuisance and I don't want to deal with that. So we rushed this a little bit. Anyway, let's get everybody back home. I'm also going to start exercising the Navy, get ourselves a little bit of naval experience. What I'll probably be doing next is working my way through here, Servizioni Militari, whatever, towards Culto del Duce. But we need to take some things along the way, like the new Emperor Ethiopia. Great for handling that territory we just took. Same with the toppling of the Amhara rulers. More compliance, always good. Over on the left here, we have the Ministry of Italian Africa. This allows us to set colonial management and colonial police. Always good when you're handling handling occupied territory. We can develop Ethiopia for more compliance. Our next order of business for Italy will be to build up. We have a couple of things that we need to do. If we are to form Rome, we will need every coastal province of the Mediterranean. Fortunately, we control Libya, but we have more that we need. We can get the French stuff from Vichy relatively easily. We can get the Spanish stuff fairly easily. Spain is easy to push away. We can take Egypt from the UK if we contribute enough to World War II. We might be able to take Turkey in the same peace deal if we handle ourselves well and same for the kingdom of Greece that leaves us with Albania we'll eat them through our focus tree and Yugoslavia Yugoslavia again we can get a couple of we can get a war goal on them through our focus tree if we look over here Balkan ambition gives us claims and the mission to send an ultimatum to Yugoslavia this is a decision so we need to save this and time it correctly we need to declare war on Yugo when they lose their guarantee by the French and preferably the Czechs they will keep the Romanian guarantee, but that's okay. We'll just get a package deal, Romania and Yugoslavia. We can defeat them easily. We also have to deal with Bulgaria. Why? Bulgaria is a leech. And if Bulgaria is allowed to join the Axis alongside us and Germany, they will take Macedonia. Don't care. Serbia, again, don't care. But they will also claim Central Macedonia and Thrace. And we need these two tiles to form Rome. And I'm sorry, Bulgaria, but because you will not listen to reason, I will have to kill you before you become a problem. So in our first war coming up, we will now gobble up most of the Balkans in one go. But first, we must prepare. Italian highways are done. I'm quickly going to grab the Ministry of Italian Africa. This allows us to send colonial police. It's much better to manage the regions that way because right now I will be running with local police force but colonial police is just way better. Also make sure garrisons are set to high priority. This region is very much a drain on your resources. This is the new plane designer boys. So we can not only slap on an engine and weapons, we can also add special modules like defense turrets or dive brakes for your close air support, that kind of stuff. But this is where you build your airplane, same as you build your tanks or your ships and it's really really cool. All you have have to do is take an airframe in this case say a basic small airframe you can then select what engine you want single engine you want a dual engine your choice let's go with single engine a good single engine and armament we can make a fighter by slapping on fighter weapons or we can make a naval bomber by adding torpedoes or we can add cast same as before but what if i want a fighter that can do more things let's start by adding light machine guns and also add some bomb base and all of a sudden we have a fighter that can also also do close air support. It's not as good at close air support as a dedicated cast, but it's essentially a multi-role fighter that gives you broad spectrum use. So this is a really cool addition to the game. You can really tailor your air force in the direction you want it to go. If you want cheap-ish light aircraft that operate close to your territory, small airframes. If you want a little bit more leeway, go with basic medium airframes. They will give you more range, more options for fittings, but they will be more expensive and slower and less agile, obviously. And if you get the large airframes, that is where you can get the classic long range tactical or strategic bombers or make them a fighter, a large long range fighter to escort your bombers en route to their destination. I'm not going to go over my research. I'm just going to go for the basics of industry, infantry and artillery. And I'm probably not going to dabble with tanks. What I am going to dabble with, should I get the opportunity, is better fighters and better cast. But I'll get to that one 
when we get there. I am also going to reserve one slot to do naval tech to improve the ships we have by increasing these, these techs and the damage control and fire control just so our navy, which isn't small, it's a good navy, but just so that navy can actually, you know, go toe to toe with the British, maybe, or at least be strong enough to get our troops into the United Kingdom because we will have to uh, <clears throat> deal with the UK someday. But let's keep the research going. Radios, always a good idea. Actually, it's fairly early. Let's get mechanical computing and colonial police. We can either recruit additional units. Mm, don't want that. We have other plans. This will give you the occupation law colonial police. Let me show you what that is. It is specific for colonial territory. So everything in Africa, pretty much. And you can go into your occupation law and select colonial police. It's essentially a better version of local police that you can still increase. So it is just better all around. And we're going to set that everywhere. And we'll also be ramping up our production. More guns, more support equipment, more artillery, more close air support. This is not a guide per se. This is not as clean as it could be. Let's get war economy in. And let's also start building. Oh, I shouldn't have gotten war economy. I should have gone for the silent workhorse first. Ah, well. All right, triumph in Africa next. And as you can see, free intelligence agency with two spy slots. Again, if Haile Selassie made it out of the country, go with anti-partisan first and get those two spies working on reducing resistance here because it will be a nightmare. That's not a concern for us. I'm going to go with cryptology and start decrypting some people. And we have more political power to spend. And they changed a couple of things the way this works. It used to be that every member of the military high command gave you experience and they all cost roughly the same depending on skill. Now we have two options. We have options that are a low political power cost with a higher command power cost. Or you can have the reverse. They cost more political power, but cost less command power. It's going to be a choice on one, which do you want? Which specific leader do you really need or want? And two, which can you afford? Because you only have so much command power to go around usually. Secondly, you can see most of the military high command itself does not give you army experience. They've removed it from all of these guys as far as I can tell and instead have moved it to the military chief of army chief of navy and chief of air force let's go here and they now give a lot more than they used to to compensate for that so we've got badolio here who gives us 0.3 daily army experience which is significant i just don't think i want his skills i'd rather get ugo here who gives me something useful like division org instead of non-combat out of supply penalties but i do like the fact that this guy doesn't cost us eh, i don't know which is best though which i would like is this guy the army maneuver expert, but I need to do a focus to unlock him. And the focus leads to a side of the tree that I don't really want to use. The choice is yours. I think I'll get more out of the Preserve Army Traditions branch. So I'll not get the leader I want. I'll just get the leader I need. Let's take Ugo here. Start getting ourselves a little bit of Army XP. Speaking of Army XP, let's also get the Officer Corps. Here we go. Professional Officer Corps. This is my go-to. Again, more daily command power. So they've moved daily command power again. This one's also cool. Makes it cheaper to hand out medals. But I haven't actually done this yet. So I don't know if this is going to be worth it. Medals, you say? Well, let's see if we can find any distinguished units here. So we can go into their unit details and go to history and you can see what these units did. And this unit specifically in February of 1936 took part in the continued action in the Ethiopian Highlands offensive operation. Cool. Lost 14 dudes, got 11 experience and not much we can do here. This one is a better example. This specific unit took Addis Ababa. As a result, we can give them a medal. Why don't we just do that right now? Let's give them a medal and this will confer bonuses to this specific unit as long as this guy remains in command. General di Brigata Leopoldo Presbitero. Sure. And we can give them, in exchange for some political power, a medal. More recovery rate, more HP, less supply consumption, more attack. I think we'll just give them the Order of Savoy First Class increased attack. I always like more attack. There. Perfect. Brilliant. Ah, National Spain has gone to war with Spain, which means we are going to be sending some volunteers. I can send three because I haven't gotten rid of my irregular threat. I'm going to send them three mountaineers along with air volunteers. One air wing. That's better than no air wings. And they're on their way. Uh, send the close air support, I think. Yeah, they'll have to. They'll, they'll do. It's now also mid-36. And we have about a year before all the guarantees on Yugoslavia disappear. Well, the relevant ones. So we need to make sure everything 
lines up somewhat correctly. And since we will be going to war with about half the Balkans, I'm also going to start training a couple of divisions. Let's see, I have one full army, not counting its missing mountaineers. Got seven irregulars and eight of these. So I'll train 16 more divisions to start. We can get more, provided we can actually get the manpower and guns out in time. Italian military industry, not that impressive, I'll be honest. I think I'll focus on getting myself a couple of extra military factories before we do anything else. Though so this is interesting. Steel, a couple of sieves, uh, or I can get two mills here and another. I can get four mills in the same time it takes me to get two sieves and eight steel. Yeah, I think I'll, bo <laughs> I think I'll go for the, uh, for the mills. Anyway, what I'm going to do now is build up my military industry through focuses for a little bit, while also still dabbling, maybe with developing Ethiopia, maybe getting the Amhara rulers event, because this gives us more compliance in the region. But I first want to get compliance to tick up naturally a little bit more. Why? Well, the, the higher compliance is, the slower it will tick up naturally. So you want to get this up to a reasonable amount through natural ticks, and then get the big lump sum rewards from your focuses a little later on, so they are more impactful. I mean, that's my thinking. I could be wrong. Let me know in the comments if I'm completely wrong. Let's get a couple more guys in. I could get the financial expert, 5% consumer goods. That's a fair deal. Or the war industrialist. Also a good deal once I start building. But I think I'll start with the captain of industry. I'm going to be building quite a few things like civilian factories, maybe a couple of refineries and railways first. So let's get the captain of industry first. One good thing about Italy in the new patch is you get a ton of political power. Power. Behold, the balance of power in Italy. It goes between the Grand Council of Fascism and Mussolini, if you're going historically. As you progress through the focus trees, these two powers might change, both might change, or one might change, you'll see for yourself. And you have the option of using decisions that take political power to then affect the balance of power. You want to move it towards the Grand Council to get certain focuses done, or to get certain bonuses, though I don't see a lot of great bonuses here, except maybe this one. Or you want to move it in Benito's favor, again, for certain focuses, and to grab some bonuses. Personally, I like to keep it around here. Consolidated power of the Duce. It gives us more political power, more stability, more war support without negatively affecting us. Because if we get it to dictatorial authority, you start losing some army, navy and air experience because the man starts meddling. Let's uh, justify to conquer Sofia. 230 days. We shouldn't be picking up any guarantees. I don't think world tension is going to spike by then. Besides, if the war goal finishes early, we can always just declare the war and just let it sit. Bulgaria is not going to join any factions. They're not going to pick up any guarantees that early and they can't reach us anyway. So we can declare the war on Bulgaria while we wait for our war goal on Yugo. And then we can fight Yugo, Romania and Bulgaria in one go. We are more than powerful enough for it. All right, we've got about 100 days left before the war goal finishes. So I think I'm going to start tracking towards eating Albania. I've got a couple of bonuses picked up for the industry already. Good amount of factories being built. Once these civs finish, I'll start moving militarizing, mostly because I want to fight and I want to fight hard uh, getting my Roman Empire. I don't have the luxury of sitting here and building up civilian economy like Germany does. No, I will be fighting in the Balkan sooner rather than later. All right, Balkan ambition done. Let's get Albanian occupation. And that should more or less coincide with, yeah, with the war goal on Bulgaria. World tension isn't high at all. And most of the guarantees have dropped. I've got the political power. Now I'm just going to wait until the uh, guarantee here disappears. This does happen when, if I'm not mistaken, the Czechs go with trust in the West. It is about mid-37, so either this month or next month. And if it hasn't happened by early August, I'll just declare war on Bulgaria and wait a little bit longer. Not really a concern. There we go. Yugoslavia refuses like they always do. Bottom option does nothing. Don't want that. Don't click the bottom option. Top option gives us a war goal. Boom. And we get the war goal instantly. So don't unpause. If you unpause now, you risk them getting guaranteed. So we now instantly declare war. We only pull in the Romanians. And we are now at war with pretty much all of the Balkan, except for maybe Greece. And we're just going to crush them. Realistically, they have nothing against us. So in the south, focus on the victory points. In here, just mess around a little bit, I guess. And to the north, grind and push hard. This really is not that much of a <laughs> challenging war. And like that, we've already linked up with the Zara front. And I think that is Yugo out of the war. Yep. 
Yugoslavia is done for. I had a little of a game crash when Yugoslavia capitulated and I forgot to hit record when I fired the game back up, but that's okay. You didn't really miss anything. I simply took all of Yugoslavia and now I intend to take all of Bulgaria as well. I'm just going to reposition the army and keep pushing. And again, with air power and our sheer numbers, we should be able to win this relatively easily. Romania does have a reasonable army for a country of their size, but once we take our Bulgaria and have a very, very wide border with them, we'll be more than fine. Honestly, Bulgaria is like not even a pushover. I don't think they even qualify as a pushover. They're just not strong. And I'm trying to be a little more methodical about this part of the war than I am about Yugoslavia, uh, mostly because I don't want to waste too much equipment too much manpower. As you can see, I need a ton of equipment, so I'm going to divert that equipment to my garrisons. Once that need has been fulfilled, then I'll train up more divisions. And there goes Bulgaria. So again, we'll take all their stuff. They don't have a navy, so nothing to take there. Submit my demands and we continue. Now we just have a very long continuous front with the hated Romanians. They are our next target, so I'll just get everybody into position and then we'll make our way to Bucharest. Now with this added front line length. Romania doesn't have the troops to keep this going. Fortunately, we do, so we'll just crush them outright. And with Bucharest taken, supply in the region is going to stabilize. Just need to control the railway here as well, and then we'll be in the money to roll up what's left of Romania. All in all, not even a very difficult war. Losses are minimal, territory gains are maximal, and once we finish this war, we simply build up for World War II. I love these encirclements. Good numbers, good numbers. So to sate the appetite. Probably should be would be better off not killing them, but I can't help myself. I see a good encirclement, I have to go for it. And there we go, Romania has crashed the game. Now for Romania, we can integrate most of this, if not all of this, if we do form Rome, but until we do, I don't want to bother with the region. So I'm just going to puppet them. And while I'm here, I'm going to take some resource rights. Yes, I will take your oil. Thank you very much. I could take their Navy, but I mean, all they have is a couple of screening ships. Yes, I could, but I really don't want to bother. They're usually trash anyway. And I think that's it. That's all we want here. There we go, Italian Romania. Mm. And the oil goes to Italy. I'm gonna topple the Amhara rulers, get a little bit more compliance out of this, and then we continue on with Culto del Duce and some bonuses to consumer goods or bonuses to political power. Many choices here. These are not that interesting. At least to strengthen the regime, which we will need eventually if we're going to go for Mare Nostrum, but I can wait. I can wait. I also want Pact of Steel, but it is going to get one of our advisors fired, but it it does lead to some bonuses by treaty with Germany, German military cooperation, some bonuses to research here as well, and Italian irredentism, which gives us a ton of claims. They are useful, as well as, uh, let's see here, war with Greece gonna need that one. It also leads to claims on turn. Like, all, all of this leads to claims. I like claims. And I also want control of the French territories, if I can get this one. If not, eh, we'll just go war with France. But I think our priority should lie with expanding our industry and expanding our military capabilities some more. So far, so good, right? Italy's gotten bigger, stronger, better. Our spies will be better served preparing for the inevitable. Speaking of preparing for the inevitable, I'm going to group up my navy, and I'm gonna send the entire Regia Marina over to the Germans once I can. So I'm going to ask to join their faction. There we go. We are now in the Axis. So we have a couple of options. The bottom one is no negotiations and that reduces resistance. Now for us, resistance isn't a problem. Again, if you got Haile Selassie kicking around, it might be. We can simply subdue them. Again, this just reduces resistance, but allows the event chain to continue. While the bottom option ends the event chain, we can make him governor of a region. This creates a puppet. Mathematically, the creation of many puppets is best because all those puppets will do their little focus trees and you'll end up with more factories. I just don't want that mess in my life. And I will simply add some, grant some concessions. I'm going to get a lot of compliance, a little bit of resistance and a free general. It's not a great general, but it's a free general. And I really hope I can get compliance up high enough. It, it is getting there. It's like in the 50s, low 50s. So... Mm. 
No, I'm not gonna make it. I've also gone and researched, where was I, synthetics, because I need a couple of synthetic refineries just to make sure that I have rubber in hand once World War II does kick off. I'll probably need more than this, so I'm gonna sprinkle in synthetic refineries wherever I can and probably go ahead and grab these uh, rubber processing bonuses. But I want to get my better fighters out as well. This is ahead of time, but I did get a nice bonus to this, so this might be worth researching. I'll be able to produce at least a few of them by the time I get this researched. I think it's gonna be worth it. Yeah, I failed the event. Ethiopia still resists. It was close though. Oh well, with our failure, more or less in Ethiopia, and I can now fully focus on the goal at hand and I'll quickly lay out my battle plans. Due to the new way that war participation is calculated, I cannot just go in and occupy the UK and call it a day. No, I need to commit to several fronts. I will not abandon Africa, but I will in fact be fighting on these two little front lines. I'll probably use my Kimichi Nere and I will try to improve this template and get a little more of them just so I can fiddle around in North Africa with them. This will give us war support, sorry, war participation participation by, you know, participating in the war, fighting, etc. I will also do the same on this front line with the French, go a little bit of a back and forth here, hopefully getting myself more participation along with the air force in the region, shooting down enemy planes or conversely getting shot down. Anyway, it, it should give me more participation. And then I will use a couple of hopefully two northern armies here to help deal with the low countries. They will go to Germany, don't care, and to help deal with France. When France has fallen, I'll redirect those northern armies for a quick invasion of the UK, hopefully, and uh, encircle London while taking the rest of the island. That should give me enough war participation to have a favorable peace deal in which I can take the entire coastline. The only thing I need to make sure that I do is one, eat the kingdom of Greece. This is probably going to be my ticket into the war. And I must not forget to get Turkey involved as well before I end things. I could draw Spain in, but I can handle Spain later on my own. Same for Vichy France. And honestly same for the swiss why the swiss well i don't like him all right working through the focus tree we have another choice to make we can either strengthen the northern industry this gives us a couple of factories or we can modernize the mezzogiorno southern italy essentially this gives us 12 steel which is great and a bunch of naval bases some infrastructure and also a couple of military and civilian factories now my heart says modernize mezzogiorno because i want that steel it looks good but this not only boosts these regions, this doesn't just give you factories, they also directly affect your design companies. Like this one will be strengthened if we complete strengthened northern industry. Same for this one, same for the industrial concern. This one will be strengthened when we do modernize the Mezzogiorno, while Danieli, the one I have selected, will do the same, but when I do the northern industry. Now, most of the things I've selected here are reliant on the northern industry being strengthened, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to strengthen the northern industry now so this is something you want to take into account if you're playing italy and you want to sort of min max it but yeah I, I, like i don't really min max but <laughs> i'm also gonna make my budget assault division i'm not gonna work with tanks i just we don't have the industry for it so we're gonna go with the next best thing and what i like to run with is nine motorized units and then four motorized artilleries three or four i think i'm gonna try four and i'm also gonna slap on engineers some support artillery and support anti-air this is ridiculously expensive in terms of um, army experience but it's a it's a it's a good cause these will be our shock troops and i'll use these and there you go poland refuses german ultimatum and we have our war with greece so we can pretty much join together here day one. First off let's put the navy back to port i'm gonna put them here wilhelm's half they will serve to naval invade the UK. Everybody else is in position. I borrowed some Romanian units to uh, help guard Sardinia. I don't want to lose territory that I don't have to. I've got North Africa. Well, I wouldn't call this locked down, but I have enough troops here to contest the area. And Greece, well, Greece is about to have a very, very bad day when my units roll south. And I don't think they have much in the way to stop me. Germany is now at war with the Allies, and we are going going to declare war on Greece because they are now going to join the allies as well. There we go. Kingdom of Greece is now 
in that faction. And we're now at war with the Major, which means we can do the Super Esercito and probably Super Aero and Super Marina when we ever get to it. Uh, these just straight up boost our armies. This simulates the reorganization of the military. And we should be good to go. Yep. Now I'm just going to take care of Greece. Uh, ooh, if I see an opportunity like this one here, obviously I have to take it. We'll do a little bit of uh, fighting along the border with the French here. Same here with the British. Doesn't really matter. Uh, we haven't called Italian East Africa into the war. So these guys are just sucking up <laughs> UK's divisions that they need to guard these areas now. Perfect. At least those divisions aren't fighting me. Anyway, now we can look at total war participation. As you can see, this has changed somewhat. Occupation is a lot less valuable and land combat damage done is a factor. So contributing to the war by actively fighting gets you points and quite a few points as, as does strategic bombing as before. Convoy rating now gets you bonuses as well. Sinking enemy ships, destroying enemy planes and sending lend lease. Also casualties, but again, not as much as before. I think I only need one army plus my motorized for Greece. I'm going to redeploy the other army to the Netherlands. Again, I can actually afford to help Germany now because it gets me bonuses. No, I don't want your lend lease. Well, so far so good. Greece is knocked out. They should capitulate soon. And that is King of Greece out of the way. Super Estercito done as well. Could pick up a couple of bonuses here. Don't think I need them really. And now I'm going to get the Super Aero first. Improve my air force. Now I'll get rid of whatever's left in Greece and redeploy my army to the low countries. So I have maximum impact there. So far, our participation is good. 40%. And I expect it to shoot up when we contribute some more to the war in the low countries as well as invading the UK. All right, Belgium's in. That's the worst one to declare war on though, Germany, but I guess we have no choice but to accept it. Should have just taken out the Netherlands. Oh, Germany, if you're not going to, I'll do it myself. Contribution is also looking good. We're getting a lot of land combat damage in. Occupation, not so much or destroyed planes, but the combat does weigh. Uh, we are outperforming Germany there. Uh, they are shooting down a lot more planes, getting their bombing in, getting their raiding in and sinking some ships actually we'll get in on that later but it's just the battles we're winning them we're doing good everything is according to plan plus of course we'll occupy the uk yeah french defenses are crumbling as we speak uh, let's get more upgrades in always need to keep things moving forward now this is expensive in terms of equipment but it's a loss we can bear it's a short campaign really once we get to paris it's all over for the french and then we can prepare to hit the uk speaking of i'm going to start start planning my naval invasion. All right, I've set up a set of naval invasions from the port beneath Hamburg towards the eastern side of the UK. We're going to try and cut them in half. And I just noticed the um, Germans are shipping troops. I don't know what they're doing and where they're going, but they're shipping troops, all right? What the hell are they doing? And with the fall of Paris, that should be France out of commission. Go on then. There we go. <laughs> oh dear God, it's disgusting. Um, <laughs> okay. Looks like we got a good chunk of occupation here. That's great, I guess. I'll have these troops deal with the Turkish border. And we're now able to actually get some rubber through Vichy France. And apparently we can still trade with Siam, who we have a land connection to apparently. Meanwhile, in terms of focuses, I have went and gotten Super Aero, so our Air Force isn't as terrible as it is. And now I'm working my way down La Battaglia per la Nastite, uh, strengthen the regime, and that will eventually lead to Mare Nostrum. And that is what we need to make Rome great again. There we go. We've made landfall and now we can start maneuvering. Move into Norwich. There you take the airfield. You push there, take the airfield push south go for the airfield you push there you hit the port as long as we can take the port we're good but this is a little bit of a micro intensive part of the campaign we absolutely have to take a port here if we don't we're screwed <laughs> oh and our navies seem to have touched oh dear lord um this actually might not be as bad as it looks my goal here is still to cut the united kingdom in half if I can do that, we're on the right track. Have I taken Hull? Yes, I've taken Hull. Just need to link up with the southern armies and then I'll have the entire coast under my control. I'll start by sending this infantry army across. Good. All right. All right. I did take some damage, but most of the infantry managed to land intact. I'm landing more infantry, more motorized. I have green air. My air force is putting up a good fight and 
we are still pulling ahead in terms of contribution. Perfect. Very, very good. How did that naval battle turn out? Oh, yes. Oh, the UK really isn't ready for this. Look at the low strength on these divisions, the low orc. These units were force deployed in a hurry to try and do damage control here. I have them by the metaphorical balls right now. Oh, I love that this still works. I love that this still works. Oh boy, the Italian army is in the fight of its life and we're doing very well. Losses very minimal so far. Inflicted casualties probably not that high. No, no not that high at all. And I think with that we should have London encircled. Perfect. The UK is not gonna like that. Now I just need to wipe the floor with whatever they have left in the south. All right. And leave enough divisions in place to keep a tight circle around London. Yeah, contribution definitely edging out ahead. Not just occupation, but all this land combat we're doing here. This is going to put us well ahead of Germany. So we'll just crush whatever's left in the south. Look at all these units the UK is wasting in Africa, taking massive attrition. All right, that is Turkey in. I'm just going to quickly declare this is definitely not going to matter. There we go. Just grind on them on the border a little bit again. Oh, I just uh, noticed there's some German troops here. I don't want them taking London. So, uh, yeah, I think I'll just turn off all of the allied supply in the region. So I've turned allied supply off for every supply hub in uh, southern England. Hopefully Germany doesn't take London. I'm still pushing hard in the north here. I'm pushing hard everywhere, essentially. I think we've got this one in the bag. Yeah, 60% participation. I think we're done here. I'm just going to end it. I've had my fill of this war. The UK is defeated and and with them falls the rest of the islands. Well, the allies. There we go. The fall of London. Wow, yeah, like the UK really didn't have all that much stuff left. We will take the important bits. So everything coastal around the Mediterranean. And now we can see some of my states are being contested. Now I want all of them and I'm going to demand all of them. I will go forward and press these claims. I can forfeit the claims and just say I, I take them. I don't want them, but I need and want those states. So I'm going to press my claims and the game seems to have resolved this and I have my stuff. No, Germany also pressed a couple of these claims. So you can see these ones ones are all mine. So uh, Turkey's mine, Syria's mine, Egypt's mine. But Germany is being a bit pissy about Greece. So I still have this in my demand so I can submit the demands and we'll see if the Germans are willing to be reasonable here. They probably will not. I'm going to ask for some more stuff while I'm here, like the Royal Navy. Select all. <laughs> it's going to be funny. There we go. And we got most of our stuff. So we got all of the Navy things, I think. But Germany is still contesting Greek territory. Okay. Okay, we're gonna select all of it and demand it. I want that Greek territory. No, nope, Germany is still pushing forward. I want Crete and I took Crete, I took Attica. Sometimes it's a little confusing how this works. Oh dear God, it's gonna be great. Are we still at war? We're not at war. Okay, so I have the entire coastline. I have all the Greek states. I have all the Turkish states. So now I uh, take out Vichy France by justifying a war goal on a claimed state, 45 days. Or I could go through the focus tree, maybe. No, I don't think I want to go through the focus tree. Instead, let's just demand the Balearics from the Spanish and justify on the French for a claimed state. Uh, French Somaliland or Corsica, it doesn't really matter. And we will simply get our divisions into position now to wipe out the French. Here's that navy we just stole. That is the majority, I think, of the French Navy and the Royal Navy, both under my control, delivered to me in Rome. Perfect. And now let's group them up with our own glorious fleet. All right. Hungarian fighter competition. Sure. Balearic Islands ceded to Italy. Hooray. Spain gives up the Balearic Islands. Great. I don't have to fight over those. Once I'm at war with Vichy France, I'll go to war with the nationalists here. E Ooh, it's going to take a while. Mm. Is there an easier way to get me a war goal through the focus tree? No, don't think there is. I'll just have to justify the old fashioned way. There we go. Declare war. I don't call in my allies. I'm going to do this on my own. And now I'm going to justify on Franco. Oh, look, now it only takes 10 days. Oh, I love this. Now, this is also new. If you start generating tons and tons and tons of world tension, countries you're not at war with and who will obviously have a negative opinion of you due to your world tension generation are going to start embargoing you. And it's going to be impossible 
impossible to trade with them. That might end up screwing you in the long run. There we go. We finished Mare Nostrum. Now, what does that get us? That gets us the decision we've been looking for. Mare Nostrum. All right, Vichy, just roll over and die. You've lost. It's over. Yeah, people are just going to constantly embargo you from this point onwards. It is what it is. It's okay. You should have more than enough resources at your disposal in mainland Europe anyway. You're the Roman Empire. You control all you need to control. I think that's it. Yeah, that's Vichy France under control. There we go. Another peace deal again. Um, we're the only ones in this peace deal. Just take everything. Take their land. Take their navy. Take everything. And at this point, it's probably not a bad idea. You know, start building tanks, I guess, with all the factories and resources I have. I just haven't researched any. Oh, well, let's just deal with the Spanish and call it a day. So just the Spanish and British states left. And that is just this stuff. So this war will see us victorious. All in all, not a terrible game. I actually have a lot of fun. It's only August of 1940. Uh, once Spain goes, it shouldn't be too much later. Yeah, now everybody and their grandmother is going to embargo us. So there's nobody left to trade with unless they're Germany. And there goes Spain. Final peace deal. We're just going to take everything. I'm going to take all of your ships, submit my demands. And I think we have everything there was to take. There we go. We control the entire Mediterranean, if I'm not mistaken. So let's see if we can click the button. Yes, I'll send you more guns. There we go. Mare Nostrum, the crowning glory of this achievement. Boom. Imperium Romanum. Now, you'll notice this is a little bit different from the old uh, Roman um, restoration decision. It doesn't give you cores and everything. It gives you cores on the territories required for forming it. So everything that is coastal, all of Greece, and I think all of Turkey, but I'm, I could be wrong. But it does give you decisions to core additional lands. I can reintegrate Egypt. Bam. Cores. I can conquer Galatia and Cappadocia. Bam. Cores. Restore order in Mauritania. Bam. Cores. And a dozen more of these decisions to just bring Roman rule back to all of those territories. So it's only 1940. And if you want to continue a campaign like this, now is the time. Work your way through all of these decisions. You own most of the land required. It's just going to be a little conquest here, some conquest there, and you will be able to get what you need. I especially love this one. Avenge Tudorburg. Oh, Arminius, you're going to get what's coming. Anyway, that's it for this video. I had a ton of fun with this. I hope to make a lot more videos like this. If you want to try out the new Italian, Ethiopian or Swiss focus trees, check out my link down below. I've partnered with Paradox to uh, <clears throat> hook you guys up with some DLC and I hope you enjoy this next video as well. See ya.